let's embark on a musical journey together, unlocking the guitar secrets behind Steve Lukather's iconic guitar sounds. Join me for Lukather's Guitar Secrets, where we unveil the simple yet powerful techniques, helping you craft a professional and polished sound. Get ready to transform your playing and let your guitar have a sound of its own. <laughs> What would you have done if you weren't a guitar player? I mean, did you ever have any kind of other, like, dream? No, you know what I'd be doing if I wasn't playing guitar? You want fries with that? Hello, people. Welcome back to the channel. Back again. I'm Eric. I play the guitar. And today we're going to unveil the secrets behind Steve Lukather's iconic guitar sounds and techniques and so on. Come with me! Lukather's tone is as much about his gear as it is about his playing. We're going on a gear safari, exploring the guitars, pedals and the amps that uh, makes for Lukather's iconic and unmistakable guitar sound. First of all, grab your guitar, preferably with humbuckers, but it works with single coils as well. A whammy bar with a floating tremolo, we're gonna talk about that a little bit later in the video. And your favorite amp, mine is gonna be the Line 6 Helix because that's my amp of choice. And if you like the sounds, I have them down below in the description, so be sure to check them out. Lukather has used a variety of gear throughout the years, including guitars such as Mike McGuire Valley Arts guitars, Les Paul Deluxe, Ernie Ball Music Man Luke guitars, and that weird guitar that he has, I can show you here. Probation Adams and so on, as well as amplifiers such as Bob Bradshaw's pedal board builds, and the amp he uses today, the Bogner Ecstasy 101B. I'm fortunate enough to own one of Steve Lukather's signature guitars, the Luke 3, and that's my absolute favorite amongst the signature models, featuring his transition pickups, a beautiful Koa neck and more. For more details and breakdown on the guitar specs, check the link in the description. And now onto the secret sauce, the effects the reverbs and the delays. Lukather uses them to add texture and personality to his playing. And if you listen to an old interview with Steve, he says that he likes grease. <laughs> Not grease as in the movie, but grease as in many effects. <laughs> I happen to love grease on my guitar, grease being effects and whatnot. Hmm, I wonder, where is the, where is the verb and delay? I better start working at McDonald's soon. There we go. To emulate Steve Lukather's sound, you need a whammy bar and a floating tremolo. And I'm gonna show you right now how to set it up. So you need a floating tremolo like this one. So I can show you like this one, it looks like this. And how to achieve this, you need to get away this plate back here. I can show you on this guitar. So the plate is removed. Then you have two screws here. Can you see the screws? Then you just tighten them with this. <laughs> I don't know, it's uh, Stjern Meisel in Swedish. You do like this and then you tighten them. And when you tighten them, the plate are going down to the body. And when you release them, so the screws are going out, the, the tremolo is going up. So you want the tremolo to go up a bit, so you can get the floating tremolo, so you don't... Because then if you don't have the floating, you can't bend it backwards. And you want to be able to bend it backwards. Yeah, that's it really. You can't do it on a Les Paul if you don't have like a Floyd Rose, Floyd Rose uh, style or something. So for all you Gibson fans out there, I'm sorry. <laughs> Now that we covered the basics, let's dive into one of the key elements of Steve Lukather's guitar sound. The whammy bar, the secret sauce to his guitar playing. So this is how you scoop into notes with the whammy bar. And then you need to master the vibrato with the whammy bar. You do like this. So that's why you need a floating tremolo, so you can pull up and down the whammy bar, like this.
So if we combine those two, and a good thing to do as well is to hold the whammy bar while you play, like this. Then you get more control and you have easy access to the whammy bar at all times. And then you have the bridge hit for some texture. Like grace notes, you can say. And the last one is the ruler slam. I don't know <laughs> if it's called that, but it's like a ruler. But not some some people do it this way, like Dimebag Daryl. But Steve does it like this, and it sounds like this. So you basically pull the whammy bar up from the strings. So if you apply all those techniques that I just show you, it can sound like this. Lukather uses a lot of upstrokes in the expressive part of his playing, creating a unique sound different from upstrokes or fingerstyle. He has a specific angle for upstrokes. Without this angle, you get a warmer tone. One of the defining aspects of Steve Lukather's playing is his ability to seamlessly blend rock, jazz and blues elements. To capture this versatility, start exploring various scales, such as the major and minor pentatonic. And the blues scale. which form the foundation of blues rock solos. Experiment with adding jazz-influenced passing notes and chromatic runs for that Lukather touch. Remember, playing makes perfect, so don't be afraid to spend some time practicing. Here's the guitar solo from the song Rosanna by Toto. Listen how Mr. Lukather makes use of the major pentatonic with a mix of chromatic runs. This is a perfect example of the typical Lukather solo. Build energy through the solo, low to high, and then end it with one of his signature bends. Lukather's style shine not only in his solo, but also in his rhythm playing. To nail those infectious grooves, work on your right hand technique and experiment with the muting techniques. Lukather's ability to create catchy and infectious guitar part lies in his understanding of the song's structure and his mastery of the rhythm guitar. So take the time to dissect his rhythm parts and don't hesitate to put your own spin on them. In an interview with Rick Beato, Steve talks about having the arranger's ear, and that contributes to his sound because he can pick apart parts as he wants to, you know, just uh, watch the interview. The Still. thing was, I have an arranger's ear, yeah, and that's what studio musicians, the guys that were really successful, all have the same arranger's ear. Yeah. When there was no guitar one or two written out, it was just like, well, here's the two of us, what are we gonna do? Somebody goes, starts going for a muted part, you go, okay, that's you, and, and then you come up with an arpeggiated part or something that complements. A, 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 a... Anyway, long story short, you gotta be able to listen to somebody's simple music and hear parts around the melody and the change. Here's the changes and here's the lead melody with the lyrics or whatever. Now what goes on around here is usually what makes a song different from being a record. Steve has used a bunch of different gear throughout the years, but we're gonna mostly focus on the more recent one with some exceptions. As I said earlier, I'm using the Line 6 Helix, but I'm sure you can get similar tones with your gear. 
If you look what Steve uses live, it comes down to four sounds. So you have the clean sound with the chorus. And you have the bluesy sound with the Hendrix type. And you have the rhythm sound, which is a little bit more heavy. And then you have the cream lead sounds that we all love. <laughs> Every tone has basically the same settings when it comes to delay and reverb, at least when he plays live. So then he has pretty much delay on almost always stereo. And I saw in a recent interview that he said something about that he doesn't really like reverb. So he's, he has started to take away more and more reverb and add delay as fill out it with, with delay instead of reverb. But don't quote me on that. If you know better than me, just comment below so I don't know if it's right. I don't know if he feels like his sound gets muddy or something, but, but you know, the delay does that for you, so why don't have both? <laughs> and if you want the exact same tone as Steve Lukather, be my guest, buy his gear. His amp, his guitar, his pedals, and so on. <laughs> Tell him to bring me my money. Yeah! Now what we all have been waiting for, the Lukather's signature riffs. These are the soulful melodies and the riffs that hooks you in. By incorporating this to your own playing, you're gonna be able to sound Lukather like this. now come to the end of this video. I really hope you enjoyed because I have really enjoyed making this video. It has been a lot of work because you need to be like the cinematographer, the director, everything. And you, you guys who do YouTube, you know what I mean. <laughs> so, but it, it has been a really great time. So hope to see you in the next video and until then, take care.